gentlemen, Rick Adams, your host and producer for the Deadly Experiment, live and local right here on the station you're watching us on. Well, now we're recording. As you may notice, we have an empty view, but you hear my voice. I'm on by phone. We're doing the program by telephone on the run as we have indicated before uh, and will indicate in future broadcasts here on uh, local public access television we are in the times of great transition of hectic and, um, and vicissitude uh, paces in which um, time is moving very rapidly and so we are not in the studio we are not in the uh, the prison yet but uh, as you can see on uh, the background is evident Friends, we are in the time of Jacob's trouble, as it mentions in the scriptures. We are now witnessing a number of attacks in America, false flag attacks, fake hoaxes, shooting hoaxes on campuses, in churches, bombing marathon hoaxes, and the like that we've been telling you about now for the past two years. And we have never been corrected. We stand on our principles and we have told it like it is. We are now witnessing a rapid increase by Homeland Security. Yes, you got it. The Department of Homeland Security, which has a huge federal budget, which, as most of you know, every single time there's a new funding crisis that comes or Congress has to renew its funding, there is a new hoax, there is a new threat, there is the interdiction by the feds of another Muslim who is going to blow up the country. Well, it's all BS. Folks, Rick Adams told you that for a long time. Many of you at first couldn't believe it. Now you're believing it. You're seeing crisis after crisis, alleged shooting after alleged shooting, and all of it falls flat on its face. We have exposed it here on this program a number of times. We've shown you the videos, the impossibility of any of these attacks, whether in France, Charlie Hebdo, here in the United States, the Charleston Church alleged massacre with uh, a made-up name of uh, <laughs> Dylan Storm Roof. Uh, Storm Front is a, an organization which is a supremacist organization. Part of that name was taken to give it to this young man who who was posing with his uh, memorabilia on, uh, on race war in America. So friends, the, the whole gig now, it's clear, is that we are witnessing, as the scriptures tell us, a flood of lies in the end times, a flood of lies. And to bring you in tune with what kinds of lies we have just witnessed, and will continue to witness in the weeks ahead following this broadcast, we're going to show you now a video and another video strung together. One of them, the first by Red Silver, who's kind of comical and yet highly intelligent, highly informative, showing you just how fake this Umqua College shooting was. Fake as a $2 bill or a $1 Federal Reserve note. Totally impossible to believe. Staged by the Homeland Security Department, which has direct ties to Israel. The Antichrist system in the end times, the bad fig tree noted by Jesus in Matthew 24. Read it for yourselves. The tree planted in the final generation of time. Friends, we're living in that time. The video by Red Silver will be followed by Russia Vids, another good friend, who has shown you and will show you today the impossibility of any of these shoots, the crisis actors, the, uh, the fakery, the lack of blood, the lack of any scenes of murders or anything, the, the so-called heroic ones like Chris Mintz and others. Friends, even the police chief himself, John Hanlon, said that he did not believe Sandy Hook was real. He said it was a hoax. Now, all of a sudden, he is the, at the center of this hoax in this college town in Oregon. All right, 
first video is coming right up by my good buddy and your good buddy too, and that's Red Silver. Watch it, watch the next one, and at the end we'll come back for a closing commentary. Rick Adams, he's on the road today, and will be for a little bit. We're on the run, folks. Time is short. Let's get to the first video on the Upcore College shooting hoax. This is the Bill O'Reilly interview with the mother of supposed son who was at the shooting, Marilyn Kittleman. Just want to show you this part here. This is obviously, I don't know, an hour or two, three, whatever, after it. Things have been rubbed off. People are just observing what's going on in the background. Just want to point out this guy here. You know, the, the very strange looking beard that goes under his chin. Short back and sides. Um, I wonder who this guy is. We'll just play it. He did not, and it's just so you know, you, you summed it up earlier. I mean, he's not injured. He looks okay, doesn't he? Whoever We're this guy is. Hunting and shooting town, and my Having a good look. Age 17. We'll just go back again. Okay, so we'll have a look at him again. He's obviously not injured, hasn't been involved. He's just with some spectators there. Just checking out what's going on. He did not, and, and just so you know, you, you summed it up earlier. We're really a hunting and shooting town, and my son at seven, eight. Okay, I'll get back to that image again, but I just want to show you a few things here. What do we have here? Army vet shot at least five times trying to stop Oregon shooter. Hero dad to survive shooting on day of son's birthday. Huh? Who the? This is the same guy. This is the guy we've just seen. An army veteran who took five bullets trying to stop the massacre in Oregon looked up at the shooter and said, it's my son's birthday today. Oh, of course, the, the shooter wouldn't shoot him because he said it's his son's birthday. Hero dad, Chris Mintz, is expected to survive the mo Thursday morning shooting. In an interview, Mintz said his concerns were for everyone else touched by the tragedy. I just hope that everyone else is okay. I'm just worried about everyone else. There we go. Chris Mintz ran towards gunfire to save other. Wish you a speedy recovery, wrote the Marine. Who was once engaged to Bristol Palin, daughter of former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin. Mintz is one of seven wounded in the shooting at Umpqua Community College that left 10 dead. Mintz threw himself towards the classroom door to try to block the shooter from getting into the room. The gunman made it into the room and shot him three times instead. Mintz called out that it, it was, it's my son's birthday, don't shoot me. But he shot him two more times, according to his aunt. There he is, not a scratch on him. Not a single scratch on this guy, and he was shot five times. What, with a water pistol? Well, let's see him again. There he is. Let's just go back here. There he is. Same guy, same haircut, same beard. It's him, all right. Okay. What other pictures are there? Yeah. It's him, all right. Let's just see what they got here. Ten killed, seven injured. Look at all. There he is. There he is. Chris Spence. Army vet. Survived with two broken legs. Yeah, bullshit. Uh, what else we got? A hero. Charge a gunman to save lives. Three victims in critical condition. Here we go. George, good morning. The CEO of Mercy Hospital here spoke just moments ago saying they have never seen a tragedy of this scale before. You know, this is a very small community. And Always a small community. The scope of this shooting. Seven people wounded and taken to hospital, including heroes. One of them that we're learning about this morning, an Army veteran. This morning... Always a hero in these shootings. Always a hero. Army veteran, of course. 30 year old Chris Mintz out of surgery recovering from sep looks pretty happy for someone out of surgery and gunshot wounds witnesses say the student and army vet charged straight at the gunman trying to save who he could telling others to run he ran to the library and pulled all the alarms 
and he was telling people to run, grabbing people, telling them to. Oh yeah, what you said? You stood there and watched him do all this, did you? Back towards the building where. He seems to know a lot. He ran back into the building and. Uh, Try to cry. According to his family, in North look at these two laughing. It was his son's birthday. But they're laughing. It's the fall. It's the fall. And it says it's my son's birthday today. Oh. Two more times. They're just. They all know the story. He walked away with his wife, and that's more than so many other people did. Overnight, police and FBI. Let's just go back. This apartment complex. Have a look. Have a look at them smiling. It was his son's birthday. <laughs> Get shot three times. Hits the floor. Have a look at these fakes. It says it's my son's birthday today. Get shot two more times. They're just. They all know the script, don't they? He walked away with his wife, and that's more than so many other people. So you can see it for yourself. That's him there, hanging around, checking out what's going on, how he's going to play out his script, and he got sprung on camera. Chris Mintz, you have been. Bastard! What you see here is nothing more than a crisis actor. And why do they smile? Because first off, no one died, no one got hurt. Number two, they're making their acting debut. They can't help but expose themselves as actors that they are. That's why you see these big smiles. They know they're getting their 15 minutes of fame, 5 minutes of fame, 20 minutes of fame, whatever the case may be. Just look at these images. And this woman or this student, supposedly her best friend was shot up is in the hospital. Does this look like a person that is in distress? I don't think so. Not only do I don't think so, I know so. As I mentioned in my previous video, the Freemasons that run this world, the highest degree in the Scottish Rite 33, order out of chaos, and this is what it's all about. They create this chaos when the dust clears, dust settles, they're going to have their order. And their order is gun control. And again, with a 33, supposedly 13 dead and 20 injured, you count for the brain dead masses that watch CNN, that equals 33. And going back in time with the Illuminati card game. From 1995, these psychopaths that run this world, they're telling you what they're going to do before they do it. Gun control, and they're going to be using the hoax card to pull this all off. Now, before I play this clip with crisis actress Christina Bernardo, people need to understand again. What's taking place here? In this clip, you're going to get a better idea, a better understanding of what's going on. This is nothing new with all the smiling with these crisis actors. Right after he supposedly lost his child, of course, Robbie Parker, and understand, as I mentioned many times, the 33 Parker, the name Parker in numerology is 33. Same thing with Andy Parker. From the Allison Parker shooting hoax. Now let's take a look at this video once again. Uh, looks like the family is there, and they're getting ready to make uh, to come to the microphone. So we'll listen there. Okay. Now, all you out there that watch CNN and believe the news, you see this, and in your own mind you rationalize what's taking place here. Uh, oh, they can't be. They can't be faking this. Someone would talk. Who's going to talk? They own the networks. They own it all. So they have no platform to go and talk. Now to continue on with the Oregon shooting hoax at the community college, let's take a look again 
at this female crisis actress. You know, she can't help herself. Again, this is her 15 minutes of fame. That's why you're going to see all the smiling, all the laughing. You know, again, no one died, no one got hurt. Let's take a look. I'm at the Douglas County Fairgrounds right now, and this, of course, is where family members are reuniting with students. Um, so I'm able to talk to some of the students who are arriving here. I'm with Christina. This is an especially tough time for you right now because you're hearing about a friend of yours. What what can you tell us? Um, as far as I know, she is be she has been life flighted out to Sacred Heart, and the bullet, as far as like I said, as far as I know. Uh, missed her spine and her lung but punctured a lot of muscle tissue getting through there but she is in surgery right now like i said as far as i know and she is alive where was she at, at the time um like i, I keep repeating as far as i know just because we are being updated with information just as often as you guys are and she was in the actual classroom that it happened that's what we've been hearing of those of us that are friends with her and so she was in snyder hall so certainly you're thinking about her right now. Have you been able to be in, in touch with her family? Or I have. Uh, that's who I've been hearing this information from. I've been hearing a lot of it has been uh, Facebook updates by her brother. He posts. He keeps posting that everything's okay. That she's in surgery. The last I, like the last one I heard was that she was in surgery and she was being life -led. she was being life out to surgery at Sacred Heart. Oh my gosh. Well, certainly everyone is pulling for her right now yeah. <laughs> and, and we know that there are others like her and have been life flighted you know either taken to the hospital here locally or life flighted yeah. out and certainly what's so funny your friend has been critically shot and she's laughing not a single teardrop as usual how people can't see this completely mind controlled we know emergency, emergency responders are doing everything they can for, for those students. You were also at school at the time of the shooting? I was, yes. Um, it was a little a little scary, not going to lie. Ha -ha. Uh, I was scary. Ha -ha. The shooting what happened in Snyder Hall, and I was in the science building, which is the building right next door to it, in a biology lab. And I was mounting a wet slide for a look at some moth. See, besides a stupid grin, they're telling these little side stories. These little side stories about what she was doing at the time of the supposed shooting is to add realism. When you when you give these little details, it gives the the impression of a real event taking place. And they always do this. Always do it. <laughs> uh, at the front <laughs> of the classroom when we heard a little pitter pattering like a backfiring car, like in the distance. And I thought nothing of it because I thought it was construction because they're we're building a new nursing building on campus, so I assumed it had to be construction. It was loud anyway. Exactly. So I thought nothing of it until about maybe a minute to three minutes later, uh, a professor came in from next door saying, uh, there's a possibility of a shooter on campus. We're going to have you guys go to the back storage area um, to stay there for a lockdown. We're going to treat this kind of like a lock, an actual lockdown, lockdown drill. It wasn't until about 10 minutes after that that an email was released to staff and staff let us know that this was not a drill. That was a very specific last line. We are in lockdown. This is not a drill. So you and other students went into a... That's exactly what it was. Nothing but a drill. Period. A back storage mm -hmm. area. What did you do back there? What did you say to each other? We actually, um, funnily enough, there was two, th two things that were enough. kind of happening at the same time. One was... Funnily enough, talking about funny is almost like the Masonic square and compass. Give me a freaking break. Yeah, you piece of garbage. I was just thinking about my bag. Like, I can't believe I left my bag and my phone. There were so, there are people that were waiting to get in contact with me. And then uh, the other thing that I was doing back there is we were actually using the time to get to know each other because it definitely changes the dynamic of your classroom and the classmates that you have. Who talks about this stuff? Your friend is critically injured, and this woman's talk or this piece of garbage is giving all these irrelevant stories. The whole thing's irrelevant. But anyways, when you're in such a high uh, adrenaline situation, and so uh, we actually spent the time to get to know each other, we, we found that there were some military in the classroom. We found out that there were people that had uh, people that had were in other classrooms that were texting each other. We were just getting to know each other, honestly, and actually kind of spending the time to bond, strangely enough, because there was nothing else to do or comfort each other, those that were freaking out a little bit. 
I think I remember one comment specifically was, "I left California for this." So. Oh yeah, I think so we all funny. Kind of wonder how yeah. would we ourselves respond? Yeah, but you never expect to really ever be in that situation. Exactly. Was there anything unusual at all on campus this morning? Anything out of the ordinary that when you think back to it now, you wonder about? Absolutely not. I mean, I was driving to school, jamming out to Taylor Swift, and so uh, there was wow. nothing absolutely that was crossing my mind that this was going to be anything other than an ordinary biology lab day. We were talking uh, just a little while ago uh, about what a tight community this is, you know, uh, mm -hmm. the, the town of Roseburg, around 20,000 people yeah. or, or so. You have all grown up with each other. Yeah. You worked. All this laughing, all this smiling with all these hoaxes, and I believe those that are pulling off these hoaxes, they're, they're telling these Christ actors, it's, it's perfectly fine. Go ahead and do it. And this is a form of mockery. Like, people like us that expose it, it's not going to matter that we expose it, because people are still going to buy this garbage. Period. Together, right? Exactly. Uh, there are people here who there is this is a community of 30,000 or so it's about 35,000 or so so the, there's a very real possibility that uh, one of us or someone that we know could know the shooter or went to school with the shooter either in elementary middle school or high school or even works with this person we have no idea but it the thing is that it's such a tight-knit community there's someone that's going to know someone that knows someone that knows the shooter here and it's so I mean, we, we talked about that, that you know someone who has been injured, so mm -hmm. we, we certainly wish them well. Thank you very much no for, for sharing this experience. We'll go ahead and send it back to you. Oh, she's so happy. Again, how people can't see through this, unbelievable. And here's another one, Tracy Denby. Now, this one really takes the cake. She lasts the entire interview complete mockery again this is how the elite love to mock the masses they instruct her to do this I have zero doubt take a look she spoke with a friend about a mile south of the college shortly after hearing about the shooting rampage she called it tragic oh I'm getting choked up <laughs> uh, my hopes my my heart and my my thoughts and my prayers are out there for the families who lost their family members today um, as a mother myself, um, I think it's one of the most tragic things that could happen is you send your kid off to school and you find out that something terrible like this has happened. Well, we all do the same thing. We rehearse our words, but we rarely rehearse our gestures. We say yes, we shake our heads no. We tell very convincing stories, we slightly shrug our shoulders. Presidential candidate John Edwards, who shocked America by fathering a child out of wedlock, we're going to see him talk about getting a paternity test. See now if you can spot him saying yes while shaking his head no, slightly shrugging his shoulders. Lots of be happy to participate in one. Uh, I know that it's not possible that this job could be mine because of the timing of events. So I know it's not possible. Happy to take a paternity test and would love to see it happen. Okay, those head shakes are much easier to spot once you know to look for them. Um, I was injured while helping the elder man trying to, trying to get to a, a safe area. I turned around and there was a gunman and, and shot me twice. Um, I was shot in the foot. Um, after I had a shot, I got to the, um, the area where the planes were at and people were coming towards me and asking me, you know, were you shot and what's going on? I was like, and I could not. All I could think about was, you know, helping them. Like, you know, I'm, I may be injured right now, but the concern is really to take care of you. You don't know where the gunman is at. So I like to make sure that people are safe first. Don't worry about me. And it's subtle, but the same exact head nods. What happened is you send your kid off to school and you find out that something terrible like this has happened. Incredible discrepancy between horrific events that she describes and her very, very cool demeanor. And if you look closely, you'll see duping delight throughout this video. But at night, when I close my eyes, I can see Christy reaching her hand out to me while I'm driving, and the blood just keep coming out of her mouth. And that, maybe it'll fade too with time, but I, I don't think so. That haunts me the most.
Well, now, have you had enough again, my dear friends out there in television land? Oh, yes, guess who comes to the rescue with more gun control legislation? Why, of course, Mr. Obama, who just happens to respond to each so-called tragic shooting with another appearance on the screen, another press conference, telling us how sad it is to see America torn up by violence as he once again gives permission to, and his blessings to, launch airstrikes in the Middle East, to destroy hospitals in the Middle East, to destroy children in the Middle East, to kill Muslims, to kill a number of others who are Christian in all of these countries of the Middle East, including Yemen with the Saudi government, which is a crypto-Jewish government of the synagogue of Satan. Oh my, oh my, look at those four fingers pointing back in the mirror. And Jack Reed, and, uh, and uh, of course, uh, we have uh, Gina Raimondo, the governor, and a host of others telling us that we need greater gun control. How convenient that everything just happens to click, just as Homeland Security wants it to. And then we have the great racial divide in America. Uh, Black lives matter, whites don't. The Providence Journal continuing to be a participant in that stirring of the pot so that we have the threat of racial and, uh, yes, ethnic rivalries pouring into the streets. The police are being discredited. The idea of greater military involvement in the cities and federal involvement is becoming more attractive. More psychiatric counseling, a new cottage industry for gun control. Rather than Jack Reed and Shelley Whitehouse and Cicilline and Langevin and all of those radicals in Congress, folks, just trying to broadside the Second Amendment, they're finding a new way of doing this, and that happens to be psychiatric care. Already, as a result of these fake shoots, we now have legislation in several states that would turn you in if you sound very suspicious to a neighbor, a fellow classmate, maybe a family member, sounding like an extremist, sounding like one who believes in those conspiracy theories of the government of the U.S., sounding like a super patriot, you could be a mad shooter, you could be one of those radicals taking over a college campus and shooting and killing and all kinds of things. Oh, you wouldn't want that to happen, so let's give the government the same kind of control it had in the old Soviet Union in the 30s and 40s, where they put people in mental hospitals who just didn't seem to be with the latest state propaganda. That sounds familiar to you? Sure does. Well, but it can't happen here. It's never happened anywhere else, has it? My friends, it's wake-up time. These are the times of the end in which the government will be imposing martial law following a false flag attack that will be real, not fake, as we saw on 9-11. Friends, you need to be prepared spiritually. You need to get into the Word of God. You need to read Isaiah. You need to read the book of Revelation. Matthew 24, Mark 13, Ezekiel 13, Ezekiel 38, and know that we are in the times of the fig tree generation, the fig tree being planted in Jerusalem in 1948. Friends, it's all about controlling you. We're out of time today. We want to thank you on the run, Rick Adams here by phone, telling you the time is shorter than you think. Don't be deceived by falling gas prices, fuel prices, nice weather. It's going to change overnight. Be prepared. Stay tuned for the next installment of The Deadly Experiment. Rick Adams here, your producer and host, saying goodbye and Yahweh bless his elect.